Hey guys, how are you? My name is Chris Aguirre with Hazmat IQ. This is Joe Gorman. Uh, we're doing the chemical of the month, and remember what we're doing this for? We're doing this so that we can practice the system. So we're assuming you've been to class before. If you haven't been to class, you can call the uh, Google Hazmat IQ or Federal Resources, and, and you can inquire about having this class. It's a one-day class on uh, responding to every hazmat calls, including the unknown, and having a system for your department that stays, makes you safe. All right, today's chemical is TDI. So right. let's start with that. Who's ever heard? Look, imagine you get in dispatch. Hey, we've got a release of TDI. I've never heard of right. TDI. So how do you do that on a chemical you've never heard of? You use the system. So make sure you guys get your books and your charts out, and we'll walk you through the process. I want to spend a couple of minutes just going over this system. Remember what the system is. Uh, remember, this thing was designed to go from dispatch, which is step one, to hot zone, which is step four. We give you time allotments for each system, each step, and by the time you get to step four, you're ready to safely make entry into the hot zone. So step one, I use the charts, right? I use the hazmat IQ charts. I go to chart number two. I look for TDI. TDI is not there when I go to the T's. The, 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 when I, it's not there, the note takes me to above the line. So we have this broad brush hazard approach. It's got all the possible hazards of all the possible above the line chemicals. So what's an above the line? No different than getting sounded out to a house fire. You don't know the square footage. You don't know the height of the house. Hey, how many bathrooms are in there? You don't Is know that how important? many bathrooms. You don't have the blueprint. You don't know if there's people in there, but we do respond. We respond as if it was fully involved with people in there. So we said that you size up and tweak down when you get there. So what size up mean? You look at start, you look at above the line. This is a gas. Initial hot zone is at 300 feet. The vapors are heavier than air. They're toxic in parts per million. They're flammable. There's an LEL. Do you know what the LEL is right no, now? No, I don't. Right, no. so we don't know the numbers yet. The numbers come out of the book, but I've, in yeah. the size up, we're saying it has an LEL. Right, they all change. They all Does change. it polymerize? It polymerizes. Sure, it's why not? It's flammable. It's toxic in parts per million. It's radioactive. It's water reactive. It's pyrophoric. It's air reactive. It has fluorine in it. It's an acid. You can see there's a red X there. So everything to the right of the, all the words to the right of the dot are a hazard. Everything to the right of an arrow is the instrument that you're going to have in your safe kit. That, why do we call it the safe kit? Stay alive five equipment. Because what's the goal? To stay alive till the tour ends. So the last bullet that you'll see in the above the line size up, it says continue this size up on chart three. Because if you can get a, a chemical and put it in a family, you can reduce the hazards. Can you always put it in a family? No. So if we can't find the family, let's, let's just go to chart three and we'll run through TDI. You go to the first box. TDI. You look at all those syllables that tell you the product is organic, it's not there. So that would be a no. So you go to the middle box, which has, tends to be the first thing of all the corrosive gases on the planet. TDI. TDI there. No. So those two no's take you to what play? You got to call a play. Everybody can't be freelancing on a hazmat call. So we call that a red one, which red one basically means that we continue the same hazards that we had in the above the line. Let's see if we can put it in a family. That would be a little bit better than red one. So look at the char box. Toluene. Do you see the word toluene there? Yes. Go to the next syllable, iso. Do you see the syllable iso there? Yes. That's Two clues for flammable. That's telling us what? That the, this chemical has carbon and hydrogen and that it's flammable. It has an LEL and it's a flashpoint. And we'll talk about that later as this video progresses. And then you go down to the family. Cyanate. Cyanate. That sounds a lot like cyanide to me, Chris. Right, so you got somebody there who says, hey, I think this is a red 9, and someone is telling, yeah, but is NAT red 10? So which one is it? When, hey, we're going to have an argument in the command post. I think it's a 9. You think it's a 10. What do you do when, you ha when that happens? It's both. It merge them. Call them 9 and 10, and you, what you do is you put the hazards of 9, flammable, toxic, polymerize, with the 10, which is flammable and toxic. So what's the hazards of toluene diisocyanate? Flammable, toxic, polymerize. Now we're done with step number one. And now we'll go back, we'll go to the book, and we'll, we'll verify all of these hazards. You can't look up TDI. It's not in the main part of the book. 
So what do you do when you can't find a chemical name in the main section of the book? You go to the back. And when you go to the back, it's about page four, what is that, 419, Chris? 419. 419, you look for TDI. When you go to TDI, it tells you to go to a page. And the page number 212? No, 312. 312. I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, that's why I got mine on. Yeah, he can see. They I wanted can't. to look pretty. Yeah. I wanted so to look right. So far? right. Right. Okay, well, so we go to 312. Yeah, and Three, listen, and he's a referee. Uh, line judge. Yeah, line judge. <laughs> and the guy can't see. You got to have 20 20 yeah. vision. But anyway, so you go to 312. When you go to 312, you, you look at the synonyms and trade names because there's two chemicals on 312. And so you look at synonyms and trade names and you look for TDI. And when you find the one that has TDI in it, it's tylene 24 diisocyanate The chemical name's this long and it sounds terrible. So remember a couple of things. When you have numbers like this has 2,4, get rid of the 2,4. So this is tylene diisocyanate Done. Now we look at the book. We go through the system. Chris sized it up as a gas. What's the book say? Solid or a liquid. So, ooh, that's good news or bad news? That's would good Would you rather news. do with a solid or a gas? Of course, I'd rather right? The real. solid's not going to chase me down the street. The gas would. Okay, so we got a solid or a liquid, heavier or lighter than air. Well, look, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that solids go down, right? So this is a solid, but we'll double check it by looking at the molecular weight. 174. And, and air weighs 29, much heavier than air going down. Okay, so we got a liquid, heavier than air. Now let's talk hazards. Is this liquid toxic, Chris? Heck, look at the ideal age class, all right? 2.5 parts per million. Just to give you an idea, a part per million is one inch and 16 miles. Two and a half parts per million is the ideal age, including it's a carcinogen. So CA, if you see CA up in the I it ideal age. It doesn't stand for calcium, not in the tox box. If it was in the formula box, it'd be calcium. In the tox box, it's, it's ca cancer. It's what type cancer. of cancer? Skin tumors, glands, it's yeah. circulatory, and it's measure out inhalation. So what would you wear, Joe? Klaus, what would you wear? Yeah, of course. When you have an inhalation hazard, you wear your inhalation protection SCBA. So just on that little bit of information, I'm wearing an SCBA. Okay, next hazard I want to know about, oh, since it's, since it's toxic to breathe in, I need an instrument to measure that, correct? What instrument would you use? Because if you look at the time weighted average, the O. Chappelle under exposure limit, it's 0 0.02 parts per million. PPM, remember, begins with PPM. What instrument begins with PID? D. We're going to bring the PID, but it doesn't always work. So you got to go to the book. You I look, look at the ionizing potential, and the ionizing potential means a is a question mark. What's that tell you? Question mark on our class means it's above 10.6. Well, well, think about that. If it's a question mark, does that mean it's above 10.6 or below? It's above 10.6. I don't know. The book's saying I don't know what it is. So you walk into an environment, your PID reads zero. Is it zero because there's nothing there, or is it zero because the PID won't read it? So that's why in a question mark in our class, PID is not going to do us any good. So it my PID is going to stay. Here's the meter reading: zero percent LEL. Oh, zero drop your mask. S, zero CO, zero on the PID, which it says VOC on the sensor. So we need a better instrument or another instrument to measure this chemical since the PID will not. Now, this is an instrument a lot of departments don't have. I've been all around the world. Just, just keep it to this country. One department out of 100 has an FID because it's too difficult. And well, it costs you know, 10 grand. Yeah, but well, who, then someone in your community needs to be able to measure this. You know what's a crappy day in hazmat? I'm responding on a cyanide and I can't measure it. And it causes cancer. And people want to come back into this plant. And it's your family and your kids working in the plant. So how, how would that happen? How could you run this call? Well, I worked in Fairfax County in Virginia, which is probably about 40 miles from where we are now. They make money over there. They actually, that's where the printing press is. They print money there. They use tylene diisocyanate there in the money production factory. How does it get here? It drives down the roads in tank trucks. There's tank trucks going up and down the road all over the country carrying this crap. Okay, so we have a truck rolled over. All right, so, so then we got the hazard of toxicity. I got to measure it. How much evacuation? Well, if you can't measure it, I can't tell you how big the evacuation zone is. So then we talk about the next hazard. Is it flammable? So you go, we, we look at a couple of things. If you just zoomed in on LEL and UEL, it's got 0.09 to 9.5, which is more flammable than gasoline. You're thinking, oh, man, this shit's terrible. 
But so, the flash point is 260 degrees Fahrenheit. So what does that tell you? If it spilled out on the highway today, it's about 55 degrees outside. You know what the, flat, the, the spill temperature of toluene diisocyanate is out on the highway today? 55 degrees. Now remember what flashpoint is. The temperature that the liquid, in this case toluene isocyanate, the temperature of the liquid, which is what? 260 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the flashpoint. That's when it will become flammable. Joe so, just told you it's 50 degrees outside. That's great news because I, now I can wear plastic. If I'm going to get that liquid on my skin or my turnout gear, I can wear plastic because even though it is flammable, it's not flammable today. So next hazard. Does it polymerize? Is it water and air reactive? You look at the formula. Is there an equal sign class? No equal sign. Is there a P after 156? The guide number, no P. Is there the word inhibited after the guide number? It's not there. Go down to incompatibility and reactivity, which is like the medical bracelet. These are the things that it's allergic to. And if it's allergic, what type of reaction? Is it going to be on a, what type of anaphylactic reaction, chemical reaction? You look here and it says that the... Note, note, you see that bold note? That's code for reading because it's freaking important. It says react slowly with water... Water reactive. ...or moisture to form carbon dioxide and polyureas. That's not polymerized. That's not That's polymerization. That's something besides... So this chemical does not polymerize, but it does react. Is it going to be a fast reaction creating a bunch of heat or a slower reaction? It says slowly. Slowly. So if I add a little water to it, I'm not expecting temperatures to climb rapidly, but we, you know, we'll have a little bit of an increased temperature. Next, Chris, radioactivity. 161, 162, 163, 164, 165, 166. That's our DOT guides. It's a 156, not radioactive. So is this a big deal? No. It's a poison. Yeah. It's not a flammable. It's Look at the vapor pressure, apparatus. Chris. The vapor pressure is 0 0.01 millimeters of mercury. That's about as close as you can come to a solid. So this is a super thick liquid that's sitting there, not putting off a lot of vapors. This is not a big deal. Unless, of course, you heat it up. If you heat it up, now all bets are off. Yeah, because remember, look at guys, look at the melting point, 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So okay. let's run a call, Chris. We show up that in Fairfax County, Virginia, where they print money. There's been a massive release of this, and there's a guy that's down on the ground, and he's yelling, help me, help me, help me. We show up, we're in our turnout gear. Can we make a quick in and quick out rest? Yes, we can. Would you want to walk through the puddle no, or walk around not. the puddle? No. Right. Okay, so we, we make the quick in, quick out rescue. Now the hazmat team shows up. What are they going to wear? Are they going to wear turnout gear? Well, they could wear turnout gear, but what if that crap got on their turnout gear? I'd wear level B. Sure, why is that? Because I can take the Tyvek Saranex and throw it away. Right, if it's on my turnout gear, my gear is Put contaminated. Put it right back into the recovery drum. So, so we'll, a cleanup would be a level B on this one. Obviously, your mask is on, it's not hanging. And if I was making a quick in and quick out rescue, turnout gear, SCBA. Okay, so this is a pretty easy call, even though it sounds terrible. You know what this reminds me of? Bhopal, India. That it's, was methyl isocyanate. So what did he say? Methyl isocyanate. Is that the same as tylene isocyanate? It's the same family. It's the same family, but one's a gas. One's right. putting off a bunch of vapors. This one's not putting off hardly any vapors. Okay, so that does it for this month's chemical of the month. Again, uh, tylene diisocyanate. Sounds like a terrible name, but not so bad. So for now, we're signing off. I'm Joe. I'm Chris. Peace stay, out. Stay safe.